welcome back and Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! I am so excited. Today we're going to be doing my Christmas book haul. I've got books for my family as well as quite a few. You can't, I don't think you can see them actually, but from you guys, I think, I assume. And I just want to say before we get into it, such a big thank you to anyone who has sent me anything. You do not need to, but I appreciate it so, so much. And um, I'm just so thankful. As the year comes to a close, you know, you start to think more about what you're thankful for. And I'm just so thankful to have you guys and to have this audience and um, I love you very much. So without further ado, let's just get into the book haul. I cannot wait any longer. I am so fucking excited. Christmas, ah, Christmas just like gets me. I love Christmas. It's just the vibe. It's the vibe. The girls that get it, get it. And the girls that don't, don't. If you don't get it, I guess you're just not that girl. So where do we begin? Oh my God. Okay, hang on. So I've got some books from my parents. I'm gonna save the rest from them till the end because they don't mind going at the end. But there are these three books that I know they got me and I know what they are because I bought them. <laughs> I ordered them. I want to open these first because when these got announced, so many of you were tagging me in the comments being like, Megan, you need to get these. And I wasn't going to get them because I was broke at the time. And my mum was like, do you want us to get them for you for Christmas? So they arrived a couple weeks ago and I have not even peeked. I haven't even had a look. So this is my first moment like viewing these in person. This is the Fairy Loot Special Editions of the Bear and the Nightingale trilogy, which a lot of you know is my absolute favorite favorite fantasy series like ever. I absolutely adore it. Finally, I'm going to have gorgeous special editions that match. I'm so excited. So let's unwrap them, all three of them and then look at them because I have no way of knowing in which order I'm going to unwrap them. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. I'm actually going to cry. <gasps> is it the first one? Oh no, this is the last one. <laughs> oh my God, look at it. Oh my God, it is stunning. <laughs> Oh my God. What? What do you think? What? What? What do you think? Thank like? you. Thank you, everybody. Oh. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. Look at it. I don't know which one I'm gonna put face out on my shelves out of the three. <gasps> Oh, this makes me so excited to reread this. Oh my God, the font's the same. Oh my God, I love it. I really love the end pages. Oh, I'm gonna cry. I'm actually gonna cry. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's just like, I can't. Oh my God. Okay, hold up. Oh, I love this one. Oh, Girl in the Tower. Oh my God, I love this one. The woman was too stunned to speak. I am so happy. I... <laughs> no! Hold up. Hold up. Oh my god, I can't. Oh my god, look at them together. <gasps> I actually can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love them. What? Oh my god, I am so happy. I've not always been the kind of person that's like, oh, I need special editions, but I have like, my editions aren't matching of this series. I have two paperbacks and one like mid sized hardback, because it's always been really awkward to show on my bookshelves. I've already reread these once in my life, and I'm so excited to reread them again with these gorgeous editions. I just actually can't believe it. They are so gorgeous. There's so many special touches, so many little details on all of the covers that just like beautifully represent the story. I'm in love. I'm gonna cry. I am so happy. I am so happy. I absolutely love these. So thank you mum and dad <laughs> for getting these for me. I'm gonna put one of them on my fancy shelf face out, my favourite shelf, and then the other two next to it. Tell me which of these do you think I should put face out? Just the Bear and Nightingale because it's like the first one, or do you think one of these two? I don't know, I don't know. I don't know which one's my favorite anymore. I think I would say Winter of the Witch was my favorite, but now I just don't know. There we go, they're my first Christmas present. Ah! Okay, let's unbox some of the ones you've sent to me, I assume. I don't know who these are from. Okay, whew, whew. okay let's see what this is. <gasps> Why are you shouting at me? Oh my god! 
Anna. So we have got My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. Oh, I'm so excited. So I have read The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones and I enjoyed it and I really want to read this. I know it's had a mixed opinions, but I'm so excited because I know it's like Kayla's one of her favorite books of the year. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is a horror following this girl who like, I think she's like obsessed with slasher films and like she starts like assigning roles for people in her town. Like she's observing them and she's like, you'd be this person in a slasher film and like assigning who they'd be. Kind of weird, but like we kind of vibe. And Stephen Graham Jones writing is just something very different than what I've experienced before. And I really enjoyed The Only Good Indian. So I'm so happy to own this. Oh, it's from Karis from my patron. She says, Merry Christmas, Meg. Oh, thank you so much, Karis. That is so kind of you. Oh my God, we're off to such a good start. I, oh, I wanted to own this one for ages. This was one that I almost like pre-ordered that book. Okay, let's do another one. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. So we've got Finley Donovan is killing it. So I've heard a lot of you telling me that I'm going to love this. I think she like becomes a for hire assassin. Am I right? Listen, do not take that as Bible. I, but I, <laughs> that's what I've heard about it. Nothing that you say with the details is gonna change my mind. And I've heard it's just like a very campy, fun murder mystery type book. Like it's not like serious, it's like jokey and fun. So I put this on my wish list because so many of you in comments, like on my murder mystery videos, have told me I'm gonna love this. Like this has been a, one of the highest recommended books to me from you guys that I haven't heard a lot about like in other places. Um, and this was gifted to me by Claire. She said, Merry Christmas, Megan. I hope you love this book as much as I did. So Claire, Highly recommend it as well. So thank you so much, Claire. Very exciting. Oh my God, it's Christmas, everyone. It's Christmas. Oh my God, I'm so happy. Okay, let's do one more Amazon package and then we'll do a few family ones. Oh my goodness, let me make sure I get the note. <gasps> no. Oh. Okay. So we've got Caraval by Stephanie Garber. This is one of the kind of YA books I have wanted to read for the longest time. I think this has got like a game element to it. Once a year, the infamous master legend hosts Caraval, only open to those who have been invited. So it's like a game element set in like this kind of car like circus carnival. I don't know, Caraval. There's a lot of the words beginning with C. I don't know which ones apply. The rules don't apply. This is one I've always wanted to start. I've heard so many good things and it's like such a classic series. I've always wanted to read it, but you know my thing with series, sometimes I try it. There's certain series I don't let myself start, but I'm very happy to finally own this and maybe start this series. So this is from Anna from my patron. Anna says, Merry Christmas, Megan. I hope you have an amazing holiday. You deserve it for all of the amazing content you spoiled us with this year. Oh my God. Say hi to the cats from me. Thank you so much, Anna. That is so... <gasps> That is so kind, let me finish what I was saying. But I love the spine. That is not what I expected the spine to look like from the front. Like I feel like they're different, but I really like the spine. Very, very excited. Another one that a lot of people have told me I'm gonna love. And I just received, um, what's it called? The Once, no, Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, which is, I've heard some people say it's still set in the same universe. So I'm not sure if I should read this first and then read that, or if I'm okay to read that first, I don't know. But that's made me even more excited to read this. Okay, let's do a few family ones. I'm gonna open ones from grandparents first. So I've got three from my grandparents and one from Tom's grandma. I'll open this one first. Firstly, how nicely did Tom's family wrap their presents? They like, they're on another level to the rest of us. <laughs> I don't know if she knows I even have a wish list. So I'm very intrigued to see what this is gonna be. That makes me even, I mean, she may know, but um, <laughs> this makes me even more excited to open it because I, although much as I love having a wish list, like kind of essentially picking what I get, sometimes it's really fun to see what people think you would like. What? Okay, this is something, Oh, this is not for my wish list. This makes me even more excited. Okay, okay. Unwell Women, A Journey Through Medicine and Myth in a Man-Made World. Oh my God, I'm gonna eat it up. I am gonna eat it up. Yes and yes, yes and yes. Woohoo! I am so excited. What is this? The author unpacks the roots of the perpetual un misunderstanding, mystification, and misdiagnosis of women's bodies, illnesses, and pain. 
I'm very excited to read this. This is my kind of thing. I love books about women throughout history that has been forgotten or brushed under the carpet. And this is kind of along the same vein, kind of unpacking how women have been mistreated throughout history. <gasps> ah! Oh my god, this is such a good pick. Go grandma. Oh my god. Oh, it's got pictures as well. I love this. <gasps> this is amazing. Oh my god. Also, I love the cover. That's like hauntingly beautiful with like this the women's spine. Wow. Oh my god, this is such a different book. I'm so excited to read this. This sounds so interesting. I definitely want to read more nonfiction next year. I actually checked last night. I was on live with my patrons. I was like, how many nonfiction did I read this year? And I read eight. I think 12 is gonna be a goal because I think a goal for this year was that I wanted to read at least one a month so we're gonna actually try and fulfill that next year part of me wants to set it at like 15 but that might be too much but I definitely want to read more non-fiction because like I listen I've spoken about this before I used to read every other book non-fiction every other book I used to read was non-fiction and then like I fell down the fiction rabbit hole but oh my god what a good choice this is so interesting I've never heard of it before but it sounds like the kind of thing I would love okay and then we'll get into these three which my grandparents got me they always pick so well Nanny and Pappy always pick so so well with what to get me they just know because they watch a lot of my videos so they always know kind of what I want the most so I always think their selections are like the best okay Oh, <gasps> yes! It unites us, that brings us together. It's about the Christmas spirit. It is about the holiday season. Uh, it's it about Jesus. Oh my God, I am so excited. <gasps> this looks so different than what I thought it would. I didn't even know this was hardback. So we have got Murder Isn't Easy, The Forensics of Agatha Christie by Carla Valentine. I am so excited. This is all talking about Agatha Christie's forensic expertise. She was basically an expert in poison. She, I believe she was a nurse during the war, the First World War maybe. And so she picked up a lot of knowledge of poisons. And that's why in her books, like, her forensic knowledge is really, really good. I may be telling a lie here. She invented a phrase that we now use. Something about the case, oh, hang on. Oh, cri scene of the crime? I feel like she invented the phrase scene of the crime. I will, I will Google after filming and tell you if I'm right or not. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just very intrigued about kind of her knowledge and what she learned through this. I'm hoping there's not going to be any spoilers in this because obviously I've not completed <laughs> reading Agatha Christie. I've only read like eight Agatha Christie's maybe. So I hope there's no spoilers. But yeah, super intrigued by this because that's a, what really made her books popular early on is kind of like her forensics knowledge, her poisons knowledge. And so yeah, super duper excited. What a great choice. Oh my God, another like kind of nonfiction as well. How, by the way, let's just have a little interlude. How, if you celebrate Christmas, how did your Christmas go? Let me know down below. Let me know what books you got. Next book. I told you they always pick so well. They just pick what I know, with I want without knowing I want that, you know? What would you do if when you're okay, so he said yes would go? I don't know what you mean there, babes. What is this? <gasps> Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. This, let me take a moment. Cry, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. Ah! <laughs> okay, so we, I can't believe I own this, holy shit, okay. Girls of Fate and Fury by Natasha Nyang. This is the third and final book to one of my favorite fantasy series, Girls of Paper and Fire. I have been waiting a long time for this. Uh, I read Girls of Paper and Fire, in 2019, 2019 I read Girls of Paper and Fire and finally the last one is out. If you don't know, this is this um, Asian inspired fantasy series where there's, there's these paper girls who are forced to sleep with the king. They have to live at the palace and they're forced to sleep with him and our main character is forced to become one. Obviously now the story has progressed beyond that but I don't really want to talk about it. It has a queer romance in it that I absolutely love. I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to spoil it. That's why I don't, I don't want to talk about where it's progressed because I don't want to spoil it. But yeah, this is the final book, Girls of Fate and Fury. And let me fucking tell you, I feel sick. I can't read it. I can't. I can't because Natasha Yang is going to put us through some shit. People I love are going to die. I'm not ready. But also, oh my God, just looking at that font sets my heart going. I can't do it. My heart is saying no. Oh, there's a map. Oh, get out. I am so happy to own this. 
Oh, there's another map. Oh, get out. I can't. Oh, I'm so excited. I absolutely love this series. So excited to finally own this. This is definitely going to be one that I need to finish, hopefully next year, this series. Another hardback. What's it going to be? Oh, okay. Fun. Okay, okay, okay. The Christmas Murder Game by Alexandra Benedict. Now, I've heard mixed things about this. I've heard mixed things. I know Emma from Drinking By My Shelf DNF'd it. I know Beth from Books Nest gave it like two stars, two and a half stars. But loads of my patrons were reading it and telling me, listen, it's fun. You are the murder mystery bitch. Like, come on. That's who you are. You need to give it a go. But like, I don't think I'm gonna have time to read it this Christmas. So then am I gonna read it? I don't know. Oh, there's a family tree though. Come on, come on. You can't tell me she's not that bitch. A family tree? <gasps> oh, I love a family tree. So yeah, I think this is like a family coming together for Christmas and like murder starts to happen essentially. And I, the idea of it I love, but I am nervous. Originally I was scared off by this book. I was not gonna get it because I knew Emma had DNF'd it. But like all of my patrons were like, Megan, give it a go, give it a go. And I'm like, okay. Okay, I'll give it a go. Okay, let's open all the other ones you have sent me. So we've got this one that came wrapped. Oh, does a note, is a note here? The note says, happy Christmas, Megan. Thank you for all the great content you create and the wonderful Patreon group. I have this as well and can't wait to read it. Happy reading in the new year from Taylor. Thank you so much, Taylor. Oh my God, Taylor, what have you got me? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm so happy. This is like probably the number one book I wanted. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus Christ. Check out the bless me. <laughs> okay, so we have got In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. Now, could I recite the plot of this to you? Not really, but all I know is Kayla loved it. I remember I watched the vlog where Kayla read it and I was like, okay. I gotta get it. And then loads of my patrons are reading it as well and they really enjoyed it. Six friends, one college reunion, one unsolved murder. Get out. That is everything I want. That is everything I love. That is everything I adore. That is everything I crave. Come on. They're forced to confront what happened that night and years worth of secrets. Each of them would do anything to keep hidden. This has been such a pop- Ooh, the font is small. This has been such a popular book this year and I'm just very, very excited. Also the title, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, I love. Yeah, I feel like it's been the most popular like psychological thriller, um, both in terms of how many people have been reading it and in terms of like how many of those people have been rating it like five stars. I feel like it has been so, so popular. So I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Taylor. I am doing so well. Isn't this amazing? Oh my God, I'm so happy. This one's small. This one intrigues me. I'm like, what small books did I have on my wish list? <gasps> oh, this is another one I'm so excited for. This is so exciting. This is from Fiona. Dear Meg, your videos never fail to make me smile. Thank you so much for doing what you do so well. Enjoy the book. Oh my God, thank you so much, Fiona. This is so exciting. Okay, so this is a very small book. It is called Your Guide to Not Getting Murdered in a Quaint English Village by Maureen Johnson and Jay Cooper. I feel like Jay Cooper's the illustrator. So this is a really fun book. I've heard so many good things about it. Maureen Johnson is the narrator of, narrator? the author <laughs> of the Truly Devious series, if you've read that. This is kind of making fun of like how many murder mystery books are set in quaint English villages. Like obviously Agatha Christie likes to set a lot of her books there, that kind of thing. And so I'm just so excited. It's a very small book and a lot of it is illustrations, but it's kind of just talking about like all the different tropes that exist within this kind of genre of like, murders in quaint English villages. So I don't think this is going to take too long to read. This is going to be perfect for like a uh, read along or something, but I have been so, 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 so excited to read this. I feel like it's just like such a funny kind of jokey book and I love that kind of thing. So thank you so much for This is another one I have been so excited to get my hands on. Next, this one was opened by my family because they thought it was for them, um, but I don't know what's in it. <gasps> oh! <laughs> We have The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nouveau. Oh my God, how beautiful is this cover? Firstly, one of my favorite covers of releases that came out in 2021. Oh my God, guys, it's Christmas. 
it is a Great Gatsby retelling following Jordan Baker. I've heard mixed things about this again, but I love Nevo's writing so much. Nevo wrote The Empress of Salt and Fortune and When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain, and they are both like four, 4.5s for me, those novellas. So I really want to read a novel. It's not that long, but I really want to read a novel from Nevo. And you know, it's not like an author I have never read before. Like this is an author I really, really love. And so I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to love it. I feel like other people who haven't loved this haven't read a lot of Nevo. Like they're not used to her writing, but no note. So if you got this for me, please let me know down below. Message me. I would love to know who got this for me, but it hasn't got a note. So thank you so much to whoever you are. I really, really appreciate it. And I cannot wait to read it because I'm so happy I finally own it because literally what a gorgeous cover. Oh my God, there's two books. Oh my god, the notes are really crumpled. Okay, hold up. Let's see what the notes say first. <gasps> ah! Oh my god, this is so exciting. Okay, hold up. <laughs> this is a mess. Happy Chris. Oh, it's Jody. Jody, I had to send you a couple of my favorite books that I think you would love as well as The Escape Room. Oh, Jody, thank you so much. Okay, so we have got The Escape Rooms. This was on my list. This is such a strange book because I think it's like mass market paperback. Are mass market paperbacks always this thin? the hell? This is by Megan Golden, who I read The Night's Friend by Megan Golden this year, and I really, really loved it. And this is like based on an escape room challenge. The lights go off and the doors stay shut. It quickly becomes clear that this is no Audrey competition. They're caught in a dangerous game of survival. So I'm very, very excited for this. I love escape rooms. The idea of an escape room, like as a hook, excites me so, so much. My family do a lot of escape rooms. And then I don't think this one was on my wish list. So, but I, I think Jodie knew I wanted to read it. Six Stories by Matt Walowski? Walowski? Where's that? Sorry, I've probably butchered that. I have really wanted to read this. We've been speaking about it actually on live shows and stuff. There's a death of a teenager in 1997 and then in 2017 this journalist is conducting interviews like to make a podcast about it. Um, and there's six interviews and he tries to work out the dynamics of a group that kind of surrounds of like these teenagers that surround their death. I'm very, very excited. I've heard a lot of good things about this. It's kind of in that podcasty format. It looks like everything's written you can't see but like just dashes like a script almost so oh my god thank you so much Jody. how kind of you i'm very excited this is one that has been very highly recommended to me as well guys it's fucking christmas i can't believe how lucky i am look at this i actually can't believe this okay we're in oh shit this one's from Jody as well what is this <gasps> Jody, what <laughs> hey. producers ian fitcher casey musgraves and oh God, Joni! This is True Crime Story by Joseph Knox. So another one that wasn't on my list, but we have again spoken about this. I think a few other of my patrons have been recommending this to me as well. So what is this about? In the early hours of Saturday, 17th of December, 2011, Zoe Nolan, a 19-year-old Manchester U University student, walked out of a party taking place in the shared accommodation where she has been living for three months. She was never seen again. And then it's similar in that a writer started to investigate the story of what happened. <gasps> oh, this looks dope. Look, there's like pictures. Oh my God, there's interviews. Get out. Jody. how did you, I'm so excited. How did you know I would want this? Oh my God, there's like, there's police reports. <laughs> Look forward to craziness, kookiness, outlandishness, hoopla, loud, weird, frantic, everything crazy, 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 crazy. <laughs> Reports. oh my god oh my god oh my god i'm so excited thank you so also i love the cover it's like different can you see like the font thank you so much jody this is so exciting this is exactly the kind of thing i love <gasps> emails get out i'm not looking at any more she says turning more pages but i'm not looking anymore i don't want to spoil it for myself but this looks absolutely amazing next one. Oh, i like these ones where it can go Ooh! Oh, it's from Maya. Hi Meg, I'm hoping to read Jay's trilogy in 2022, so I thought I'll help you proceed with the series too. Thank you for making all the content definitely a bright part of my year. Oh, thank you so much. So we have got Jade War by Fonda Lee. How exciting. Okay, so I read Jade City this year and really enjoyed it. It's a fantasy about like these 
families, like mafia families, where Jade is what gives them their power. And I really enjoyed it. And I'm actually co-hosting a read along that Mel Reads is doing in the new year. And this is gonna be February's book. So I'm gonna be reading this in February. So I was gonna get this anyway. So thank you so much, Maya, for getting it for me. It's a very intimidating series for me. Like I am a little bit scared of it. I'm a little bit intimidated of it. My heart's going pitter patter, pitter patter. I feel sick, like I could throw up. But I'm so excited to con continue on with the series. I thought the writing and the world building was so vivid in Jade City. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a series I hope I'm gonna finish in 2021. We'll talk about this more in my goals, <laughs> my goals video of the year, because like, guys, come on now. The series do need to start getting finished. So thank you so, so much. Okay, one more Amazon parcel, and then we'll open the rest of the family gifts. Oh, another thin one. What is this? <gasps> Maya again! What are the chances I opened Jody and Maya's like in the order, like grouping them together? Hi Meg, after how much you loved Once and Future Witches, aka Best Book of 2021, I could not get you more Alex E. Harrow books. Hope you enjoy it. Happy holidays! Thank you so much. So this is a spin spindle? 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 <laughs> Spindle Splintered by Alex E. Harrow, which is a novella. So it's super short. Holy shit. Oh my God, there's illustrations as well. It's like barely 100 pages, 116, 15 pages, and there's illustrations. I believe it is a Sleeping Beauty kind of retelling, reimagining. Myra's right. Once and Future Witches is in contention to be my best book of the year. There's three I'm currently trying to pick between, and it's one of the three. So I absolutely loved Once and Future Witches, and I just cannot wait to read more from Alex E. Harrow. Like, one of the top authors I'm hoping to read both this and 10,000 Doors of January in the new year. I'm just so excited. Oh my god, it's Christmas. <laughs> I can't believe it. I cannot tell you guys how thankful I am and how happy I am. So thank you so much, Maya. Oh my god. So excited to read more Alex E. Harrow. So now we've just got some family books left. My aunt has gotten me four books. So I'm going to go ahead and open these. Thank you so much. <gasps> You don't know how many times I've almost bought this book, like in Waterstones. Whenever I see it, I almost buy it. Okay. Oh my God, Carrie, look at the little snowflakes. Ah. <laughs> hang on, hang on. <laughs> so we have got Velvet Was the Night by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Ah, so excited. Sylvia Moreno Garcia, listen, I haven't read Mexican Gothic yet, but am I going to eat up both these books next year? Yes. Yes, I am. You can't stop me. You cannot stop me. Lies, lies, and more lies, and lies on top of lies. This is set in 1970s Mexico City, and I think her neighbor disappears, and she starts to try and uncover her secrets. There's like other stuff going on as well. I think that's like a guy who's like usually like a like a beat her upper for hire who tries to help her. Sylvia Moreno Garcia is probably one of the authors I most want to start. Like one of the authors I I really want to start. So maybe I'll put this on my. I don't know. I put this in Gothic on my 2021 TBR, so I don't feel like I can really put it on my 2022 one. I feel like that's cheating. Stay. Stay. Okay. This is a big one. I'm a bit scared. <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you have to come here. <laughs> One of the books I've wanted the most. I have been hoping and praying someone was gonna get this for me. Oh my God, I'm so excited. So this is Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sambri. Now, something you may not know about me is I'm obsessed with Lizelle Sambri. <laughs> I watch every single one of Lizelle Sambri's YouTube videos. She has a YouTube, like an author tube channel, and I watch every single one. I love Lizelle. So I really wanted to read her book. I know it's about this young witch, and I believe she gets um, told in order to protect her family and their, like their lineage, she has to kill her first love. And I'm just so excited. Hearing Lizelle speak about the way that she writes, speaking about this book, I have been so excited to read this book. This is one of the books I'm so excited to read and I really want to like review for you guys and hopefully I'll love it and I can get you all to read it. It's quite long though. It's like 450 pages. Oh, it's like 480 pages. Okay. Um, <laughs> exciting. Oh my God. I love the cover as well. What a gorgeous cover. Ooh! What was that? 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm getting too overexcited. Give me a moment. But we have got Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood, aka the, I think this is YA fantasy, that uh, Britney Spears was reading a couple months, weeks ago. Like, she posted, like, how much she loved this book. Our protagonist is an exorcist hired to cleanse households of the evil eye. She would be hired, that is, if her mentor hadn't thrown her out before she could earn her license. I don't really know the plot of this. This was just one of my, like, most kind of anticipated 2021 releases because I've heard so many good things about it. I love the cover. I believe it is a Jane Eyre retelling, which intrigues me. I've never read Jane Eyre, but I always love retellings and, like, reimaginings and remixes of stuff. Super excited. And listen, if it's good enough for Britney Spears, it's good enough for me. Oh my god, we got more of the snowflake. Okay, what is this? Oh, okay, a fun one. This is really fun. Oh my god, she's so cute. Excuse me? The girls that get it, get it, and the girls that don't, don't. Alexa, tell me I'm stunning. Alexa, tell me I'm stunning. Very stunning. We have Rise to the Sun by Leah Johnson. How exciting. So this is Leah Johnson's release that came out this year. I believe it's about two girls who meet each other at a music festival and fall in love. They fall in love. I really enjoyed You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson that came out last year. I read it last year. And so I just was like, listen, Leah Johnson is obviously a contemporary, YA contemporary writer that I really enjoy. So I knew I wanted to continue reading her stuff. This isn't too long either. Very exciting. Okay. And then my parents, as well as getting me The Bear and the Nightingale, they got me three other books. Let's see. What have we got here? Oh, this is a good one. They've done well. Okay. Exciting. So, this is The Village of Eight Graves by Sashi Yokomizo. So, if you've heard me speak about this author a lot, this is a super famous Japanese murder mystery author. Think Agatha Christie, think Urku Poro with this like expansive detective series. They're kind of being slowly translated into English. So, I've read The Honjin Murders and I own The Inugami Curse, and then this is the next one that they've translated. I love the cover, I love the green and the gold. Like, it just looks amazing. I think it's about like this old massacre, and there's like fears that like a curse could be existing or something but I just put it on my list because I loved I, well I really really enjoyed the Honjin murders so this is like an author that I definitely want to continue reading because it's super interesting as well like reading this very famous Japanese translated fiction murder mystery and it's like really interesting as someone who loves murder mystery to see the ways that it differs and the ways that it's the same so oh my god what a good one they did well with that one this one's really small what is this one I get excited when I see small books <laughs> well guess what people I get excited about small things. Oh yes, okay, good one, good one, good one. Agatha Christie, Peril at End House. Oh my God, how exciting. So this is the next in the Hercule Poirot series that I need to read. Again, I don't know too much about it. Hercule Poirot is investigating a murder, that's all I need to know. I'm just reading them in order. This one's a short one though, only 230 pages, super short. But I love Agatha Christie most of the time. <laughs> No, not most of the time. Half the time I love Agatha Christie, half the time I don't. But as someone who loves murder mysteries so, so much and loves the genre, I really enjoy slowly reading her catalogue because she's like a master at it. She's like the most well-known murder mystery author. So I really enjoy reading her stuff kind of slowly. Let's see what else they got. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> We got Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb, a big boy. I reckon my dad got this for me. Oh, it does smell nice, this one though. Oh, mmm. Oh, that one smells really good. It's getting weird. This is the second in the, what's it even called? Farsia trilogy, that's what it's called. Um, where we're following Fitz, who is an illegitimate son of the like king in waiting, I guess. And a lot of things happen to him. His father abdicates his line, his place in the line, and he moves into court. And we see him growing up from like a young boy into kind of a young man in the first book. And then this is the next book. Again, I don't know too much about the plot and I don't think I could really tell you anyway, because it would be spoilers for the first one. But I did really enjoy it. I gave the first one four stars. Robin Hobb is re a really great writer. Like it's one of those books you read and you're like, oh my God, you're such a great author, such a great writer. You're plotting this so well. So I'm very excited to read the rest in this series. I'm hoping as well I'm gonna finish this trilogy in the next year. Hopefully, the Farsia trilogy. I'm hoping I'll finish this as well because this is intimidating. And then like, I feel like I won't start a Robert, the next series, the the ship one, whatever that's called, the Mad Ship trilogy, maybe. Um, I won't start that trilogy for a while. Like I'll take a little break, but I feel like I'll need to read this quite quickly. So I am aiming for this to be 
one of the series that I finish in the new year as well. I just looked behind me and I have another one from them that I didn't unwrap. So let's see what this one is. Oh my God, I almost missed out a present. Oh, and it's a fun one. Okay, so we have Never Saw Me Coming by Vera Kurian. This is about Chloe, who is a psychopath. She's part of a secret clinical study run by the university's psych psycho psychology department. There's like a string of murders on campus and it becomes clear that the murders are linked to the study. I'm really intrigued about this because I feel like our protagonist may be unreliable and I've never read a book like from this kind of perspective and I've heard a lot of good things about this. So I'm very excited. This is like one of the thrillers that came out this year that I am most excited. Oh my God, the violence. This is one of the books that came out this year that I'm most excited to read so oh my god I can't believe I almost forgot this well I didn't forget it but I almost didn't film myself opening it you guys that is my Christmas book haul oh my god I'm gonna cry I'm so happy thank you so much to any of you who sent me books I, I generally can't believe it thank you so so much it's so kind of you I can't believe I own all these books now I'm so excited to read all of them like I said I hope you guys had an amazing Christmas if you celebrate it thank you so much as always for your support on this channel it means the world like I keep saying it but this time of year you do start to think about you know like life and like reflect on stuff and I'm just so appreciative of everything so thank you so much to anyone who got me a book or thank you so much for even clicking on this video and watching it to this point um give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it I never say that but I suppose I should give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it um oh my god I still got the snowflakes the girls are get it get it and thank you so much for watching let me know which of these you have read and if you enjoyed them if you've gone to the end of this video comment the Christmas tree emoji I love the Christmas tree emoji so if you've gotten to the end comment the Christmas tree emoji and I will see you very soon in another video bye